What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So this type of video is not something that I do that often, but this is going to be a video aiming, you know, to the beginners and potentially returning players that are here to start a new account here on One Piece Treasure Cruise for the anniversary period. So I am recording this on the 2nd of May. So currently, you know, we don't have all of the anniversary events currently live, but I feel like like this type of video is going to help out a lot of players in getting them kickstarted into the game. So if, before we actually talk about exactly what you need to know, I will link an additional video which will link you to a video on how to do a reroll. It's going to be important for you guys to do that because you want to reroll your account, get the characters that you actually want to play with at the start of the game, just to ensure that when you actually, you know, start developing your character box, you start farming characters, completing story mode, completing events, competing in, in additional content, you want to make sure you have your account with the right characters on it. You know, obviously the anniversary characters are going to be incredibly strong and the characters you probably want to get your hands on. So, make sure to go ahead and watch that video, it will give you a pretty good rundown on how to reroll your account and get you sorted. And now we are going to progress forward as if you guys already have your rerolled account ready to go. So, we are going to go ahead and start the game here. This is a fresh rerolled account and we are going to go ahead and get started in the game and give you guys a bit of a rundown as to what you should be expecting, where you need to go, what you should be doing in order to get your account kickstarted in One Piece Treasure Cruise. All right, so now that we have completed the tutorial, we're going to go ahead and get kick-started in the game of One Piece Treasure Cruise. Now, of course, when you complete the tutorial of the game, you actually receive 50 rainbow gems to get you kick-started. But you got to remember that during the anniversary periods, we're going to be receiving a lot of rewards in our gem mails. So there's going to be a lot to pick up. I don't know at this current point in time, as I said, I'm recording this very early in May, so I don't know how many rewards we're going to be receiving from the jump, but know that you're likely going to have a lot to play with. Now, this is a big thing to start you off in your account, the Rookie Login Bonus. You do get something called the Rookie Login Bonus set as soon as you start the game, but you got to look at everything else here. You've got so many rainbow gems. It's like 100, 125, 175, 200, 225 gems. As soon as you start the game, you have to log in for 15 days to get everything here. But 225 gems, five additional red tickets. I'm not too sure if those are restricted or not. But then there's also, of course, Kozuki Odin, which is a super Sugo Fest exclusive. So the fact that you do get this character for free, I would probably advise if you are looking to pull on the anniversary Sugo Fest to avoid parts with this Odin on it because you probably don't want to get too many dupes of this character when you start off you want to get you know a, a wide variety of characters rather than lots of dupes of a singular of a, of a singular unit but of course there's other login bonuses that are occurring during this time period as well and then of course 50 gems just for uh, completing the tutorial which is fantastic um, so they do want you to go ahead and start off on the world map to to start you off which is of course completely fair to do we will be talking about the story mode very briefly because this is going to be an important component of completing the game um, and to get your pirate level leveled up but we'll talk more about that in a moment if we go back to the home screen here obviously we've got all the news and stuff but we have our gem mails so we can go ahead and claim all of these and uh, we have 112 gems and of course as i said this is only just the very very start of the game and this is not during an anniversary period just yet so there's likely going to be even more gems given out. But what I would suggest is the first thing that you should do when you start your account is to head over to the Pirate King Adventures game mode. Now, by doing this, you're going to be completing the tutorial. And by completing the tutorial, you actually get your hands on this Psy Luffy, who is able to super evolve. You do get his super evolution materials as well. Not only that, you do get your hands on a bunch of the Psy free-to-play straw hats to basically get you started in building a pretty rock-solid team to help you clear all the story mode without too many issues. So I'm going to go ahead and start this tutorial. We're going to complete all of this and then uh, we'll be back once we have the Luffy and we're going to have that man super evolved ready to go. 
Now, not only with that, you actually get a really good uh, tutorial as to like what kind of team you should be building, but also a really good way to teach you how to actually play the game because these bosses, I would say, they're not very difficult, but you know, you actually got to hit your taps, you got to hit your perfects in order to kill these bosses. And they also give you the tutorial on super types, which is going to be a very key component into a lot of characters in One Piece Treasure Cruise. It's a very key mechanic that you do have to learn. And then, of course, you do get a brief tutorial in the certain debuffs that you're going to have to deal with and the certain gimmicks you're going to have to use and, and utilize in order to get around certain pieces of content. And there we go, now that we've beaten the tutorial, we get access to additional copies of Straw Hats, as well as being able to super evolve this brand new uh, Luffy, the, the, the free to play Luffy. And this unit is going to be great, especially if you're a new beginner player, uh, you want to get access to this Luffy as soon as you possibly can, which is why I'm suggesting to do the tutorial as soon as you start the game. The reason why I say that is because Luffy is an EXP boosting captain, which allows you to get more EXP when you actually beat content, which is going to allow you to level up much faster. So of course, we're going to go ahead and add all of the straw hats. I'd say probably a suggested team to start you off would be something like this and the Frankie as well, because Frankie gives color affinity and have Sanji and Robin in, in this manner here. So you get the Luffy, you get the, the way to get the full board matching slots with the two specials of Robin and Sanji. But of course, you can switch out the straw hats depending on the gimmicks that are required for the content now and when we go and check out the ships we can go ahead and uh, and get the tutorial on how to upgrade a ship which is pretty self-explanatory here where you can add the cola level up the dinghy now the dinghy does get very good once you get it to level 12 but that's not the focus for a beginner player because of the anniversary period here, this is a fantastic opportunity to level up your account as fast as you possibly can. Because what you can do is, is we can head over to the event island. And when we go there, there's going to be a bunch of stuff here. And Sabo gives us a little bit of a tutorial at, in regards to what the event island is all about. Because there's so many different tabs. It, it can definitely be overwhelming when you start, you know on treasure cruise but this is the one you want to look at here the one with the sunny ninth anniversary quest by doing this actually let's go ahead and use marco as the friend captain that's going to be more ideal here uh we can go ahead and clear this it's a very easy piece of content you don't even really need that much you could literally do it with like any friend captain and any team it's going to be pretty straightforward but by doing this, you can get access to the best uh, ship that you uh, are going to be wanting to use as a newer player in this game. And there we go. So we beat the quest and we actually got a lot of EXP. We went from level 3 to level 29 just by clearing that very easy quest. Also getting some go uh, silver lobsters there is actually really nice. But this is the big thing here. And it's going to enable you to get a lot more EXP. So as soon as we've done that, yeah, we'll go ahead and send a friend request to old mate. 
Uh, definitely not going to add us up, but that's fine. Go over to the edit crew, change our ship to the new boosted Sunny, because until May 17th, this ship is going to give you three times berries and EXP. So not only are you getting more EXP to farm up faster, but you also get more berries, which I guess when you start off the game could be a little bit difficult to acquire. We have plenty at the moment, but also 1.6 times attack as a ship is fantastic. And another big thing of getting your cruise specials completely maxed when you start the quest. So as soon as you start the game, you already have a team such as this. Now you can go ahead and, and do some leveling up, which you, can, which you can do. I believe that when you start the game, you actually get access to a lot of level up materials here so if we click the level up button um yeah you look at all these level up materials all these silver lobsters like you can just go ahead and uh, invest a few of these into luffy and get him to level 99 asap so that he is going to be a more hard-hitting unit for your team now unfortunately as a new player you're not going to get access to um to limit break or anything like that because you do need treasure map to roll around in order to do that so unfortunately we can't deal with the limit break but another thing that i suppose is quite important to uh, to talk about right here is the rookie missions now the rookie missions are very important for when you start the game because not only does it give you a lot of rewards in terms of rainbow gems and boosters and evolvers but this really gets you kick-started into the game teaching you the ropes as to how to level up character special abilities and also how to deal with you know limit breaking and these these missions especially towards the end can be quite difficult to do but by consistently doing them over and over again, you can get these missions to get a lot of rainbow gems, but also by completing these missions, there are going to be certain character specific islands that will appear on the event island by completing these rookie missions, and they allow you to level up your account so freaking fast, it's wild. So make sure as a new player to start doing these missions as soon as you possibly can. So from this point here, what really should we be doing? Now, there are a couple of things you can do. Obviously, you can start with the Chopper Man missions, the Rookie missions, but the Story Mode is going to be one thing that you want to be looking out for first. Now, if you actually click this blue orb in the middle of the screen, this allows you to view every single Story Mode island in the game, and you can just go and play whichever one you want, which is really cool. Now, you can actually click him, and it shows you the rewards if you clear every single chapter in a Story Mode mission. So just by completing Alveda's hideout, you can get access to 10 rainbow gems. But there's actually a lot more to the story mode than you would think. Uh, one thing about story mode as well is that all of them, even the really late story modes, they have changed it to, to the, the story mode is completely easy. You can beat it with the very generic team that we've built here, as you can see with the straw hats. This team will beat all the story modes. But uh, one thing that you do need to know is the rewards for some of these islands are very important. So if you look at Sir Village, you don't get any gems for clearing it, but you get access to the Going Merry. Now, while the anniversary ship is active, it probably isn't that important that you get this ship. But I want to, you know, just make it known that that ship is going to be very good at level 10. Uh, moving forward, though, there are a couple of other ones that you should probably know. Alubana gives you 10 gems. A lot of these story modes will give you 5 gems or characters for clearing these missions. But there are some that give you 10 gems, which are obviously the ones you probably want to do first. So you can acquire more gems so that you can do more pulls on the Sugo Fest, of course. So moving forward, there is the end of Skypea gives you 10 rainbow gems for clearing it. The end of the Water 7 Annie's Lobby arc gives you the Thousand Sunny. And this is probably one of the best ships that has received a level 12 upgrade. So this might be a ship you want to get. It does also give you five gems and a story mode Frankie. Frankie is not very good, but mainly the gems and the, and the ship reward are the big things here. And then, of course, there is the end of Marine Ford, which does also give you 10 rainbow gems. And then there is the Redux Saba Odi Archipelago post time skip, which gives you the coated sunny ship and some rainbow gems. And then the end of Dressrosa gives you 10 rainbow gems. And the end of Whole Cake Island also gives you 10 rainbow gems. So those are probably the story mode quests that you want to complete first to ensure that you get the most rewards with the least amount of time spent. Now, another big important thing that I know a lot of people are going to ask questions about is what Sugo Fest should you be pulling on? Now, for the first 72 hours of your account, you're going to get access to the Rookie Super Sugo Fest. Now, the steps for the Sugo Fest are actually quite incredible. Like, this is really, really good stuff that you're seeing here. You get some Super Sugo Fest only characters, which is quite good. Guaranteed Roger after 10 multis, which is incredible. Guaranteed 6 plus Yamato after the 15th. 
guaranteed Luffy crew on the 20th multi. Like, these three units are some of the best units in the game. I, th I still think Luffy crew's up there, like, close to top five. And then, like, Roger and, and also Yamato are, are, like, top tier, tier zero legends, you know? So... A lot of people are going to be very tempted to pull here. However, I think it would be a more wise decision to pull on the actual anniversary Sugo Fest because I do believe they do give you the best value because the characters that are pullable on this particular banner may not uh, be to your liking. And what I mean by that is that the anniversary Sugo Fest will have a bunch of the newer legends that are also available that you may want to also get your hands on. Additionally, the actual anniversary sugo fest should also have access to the other anniversary exclusive characters such as the waifus such as the anniversary zoro k dad luffy sabo and ace that came out recently for the global anniversary those particular units are only pullable on the anniversary sugo fest now while this head start sugo fest may look enticing i would probably advise you guys to skip it and just pull on the official anniversary sugo fest but i will say that if you are doing this kind of thing when it's not the anniversary then this is a very good way to start off your account 100 percent there are also some other sugo fests here the countdown uh, ninth anniversary jack sugo fest will be active during the anniversary period you should probably avoid this Sugo Fest. There is also the almost 9th Annie Sugo Fest. This one probably will go away when the anniversary goes live anyway. Then there is the Pipe Rumble banner, which you should definitely avoid. The Support Sugo Fest, which you should probably avoid. And then you've got the Friend Point pulls, which really don't matter. But I think it's mainly just the Head Start Sugo Fest. A lot of people will be enticed to pull here. But I think you get more value for your gems if you just wait and pull on the official anniversary Sugo Fest. One thing that I also want to suggest to you guys that a lot of people do this when they start gacha games or with this game in particular. A lot of people will opt to spend five rainbow gems to do single pulls. Like whenever they get five rainbow gems, they have to spend it on doing a pull. Now, what I will say to you guys is that is the worst way to spend your rainbow gems. The best way to do summons or pulls in this game is to do the 10 plus 1 pulls or the multi pulls as the community dubs them. The reason for it is is because every time you do a multi pull, it is literally called a 10 plus 1. You get 10 units and then you get one unit given to you for free. So you're spending 50 gems to get 11 units so you're essentially getting one unit for free with every pull sometimes depending on the sugo fest uh the multi pulls will actually be discounted like this banner here it's 30 gems for 11 units so you can already see that there's just infinite value by spending your gems on doing the 10 plus 1 pulls additionally 10 plus 1 pulls will count towards each individual step moving forward in the banner if you do just the one try, the singular pulls, that doesn't count towards these steps increasing along the way. So just a heads up for newer players or people that don't really understand gacha games that well, you want to be spending your gems with pulls in particular, doing the 10 plus 1 pulls, not the 5 gem single pulls. Now, one other thing that I want to touch up on as well is the fact that in the bottom right hand corner of the character list section of your account, this is how much space that your account is able to hold. Now, when you start playing and accumulating more characters, you may want to actually increase this. Now, in order to increase it, it does actually cost you rainbow gems, which I know, I know a lot of people are not going to be very happy about, but it is something that you will have to do inevitably. So by going to the tavern, you can see at the bottom, expand character box, it does cost you one gem for five character spaces. So yeah, you can see that it does accumulate a lot of gems very quickly, but leveling up your character's uh, character box is gonna be very important for uh, acquiring more characters in the future. Otherwise, you're gonna have to continuously go back to your character box, sell or feed characters, and it's gonna get quite annoying. So I would advise you to at least conserve some rainbow gems to expand your character box. So something else that you guys may be wondering is how to level up your account really fast. And the most efficient way to do it is by coming over to the event tab and then clicking the power up menu. And these two folders here, the, the rookie character recruitment quests. It doesn't really matter which set of these you do. Um, they're all relatively similar, but the most efficient one that people do often use is versus Golden Pound Usopp. Because the reason for that is that Usopp actually generates more EXP, or more, more uh, Rayleigh points when you actually use him uh, when you sell him back to the Rayleigh Bazaar. 
So we can go ahead and use these Luffy captains because they generate more EXP at the end of the quest. And of course, this ship generates three times EXP at the end of the quest. I have already cleared it once, but the first time you clear it, it doesn't cost you any stamina. But when you run back into the content, you can run it at three times stamina. So it's going to cost you 15 stamina to clear it, which might seem like a lot when you're starting off the game but you're gonna see very quickly that it's actually quite efficient to actually do this because remember every single time that you level up you are going to acquire a stamina meat which will fully refill your your account's stamina and with the amount of pirate levels that you will gain by doing this you are easily outperforming the amount of exp earned versus stamina spent which is a really good way to efficiently level up your your account very quickly alternatively you can just spend the stamina by completing story mode which is what i would advise a lot of you guys to do because you're also leveling up your account not as efficient as this but you're also acquiring the rewards of rainbow gems ships and additional characters by doing so so Usopp in this preemptive attack does bind the bottom right character so you could go back to your crew menu and just delete the character in this crew so you just have five characters and then the preemptive attack of this Usopp doesn't even activate. So this Usopp is very very easy to kill, we didn't even need to activate that super type but we just kill him and then you guys will see that we actually earn quite a lot of EXP for only 15 stamina spent because remember each time we level up we get a stamina refill that we can activate at any point. So we get a little bit of EXP and then all the multipliers get multiplied together. So that's one level, two levels, three levels, four levels, five levels, six, six levels. Now, of course, that's going to be worse and worse over time because the more you level up, the more EXP that is required in order to get you to the next level. But another really good reason for doing this is because of the access of, of these princess turtles the hime turtles these provide a lot of exp to your characters and it enables you to just acquire all of these boosters which will allow you to level up the rest of the characters in your account and considering you have you know all of those size straw hats beating the golden pound usopp quest is going to be a pretty good way to go about that so of course every time we level up we actually get a stamina meet and you can see we already have 41 stamina meet sitting here on our account and each time we level up we will get another one as well so you'll be able to level up really quickly by clearing a quest such as this and then you'll have more stamina meets to clear more content with now of course when you when you actively unlock clashes and and stuff like that you'll be able to level up very quickly by beating those they they give you a lot of exp but that is just one way to level up pretty quick when you start the game so at this current point in time, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. And I really hope that, you know, new players coming into the game can go ahead and get their little kickstart and uh, make sure to reroll for a really good account, you know, start the game, make sure you complete the tutorial for Pirate King Adventures to get your hands on the Super Evolved Luffy, who is a really good character. And then of course you can start with the anniversary ship, make sure to go ahead and pick up the anniversary ship. It's going to enable you to get more EXP more efficiently, but then you can start really going in, in any direction that you want you could start with story mode you could start performing these uh these chopper man missions which will also give you more gems and a lot of exp so this is probably the most efficient way to start off your account is by completing these rookie chopper man missions and then of course acquire more gems and do some more pulls on the anniversary sugo fest so that is going to wrap it up for me thank you so much for watching the video and if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. I'm that, guys. I'll see you guys within the next video.